We now have confirmation about when Diablo 4 seasons are coming, as well as a lot more of what's going on under the hood with this next step in the Diablo journey. In this video today, I've queued up a ton of the more commonly asked questions within the Diablo community to basically do a Q&A or FAQ to help you better understand what the seasons are. Maybe this is your first time, or maybe you've just never taken part in them and you're a little apprehensive. Don't worry, I got you covered. If this is your first time on my channel, the way I do things is by upfronting the knowledge within my videos so you can decide decide if it's the right video for you. So you'll find the entire document I've made and what we'll be going over in the description below. Have a specific question? Just press control F and look for it. I've also broken up all the questions into chapters so you can just select it in the timeline or description if you'd like rather than reading through it. It's hard to really kind of do <clears throat> a TLDR of an FAQ, but just to help put you at ease if you're worried, seasons will not delete your current character or any of your characters. All of your current progress will not get wiped clean. You'll simply be making a new character on a new realm if you want. Seasons are entirely optional and only provide you with seasonal exclusive cosmetics. There is a battle pass, but again, it's optional with a free version and only cosmetic related. Lastly, after the season ends, your seasonal character joins the rest of your normal or eternal realm characters. If you don't want to do the season, you don't have to. You just simply keep playing exactly how you are now. As always, guys, please play the game how you want. If you don't want to do the seasons, then screw it. There's a seasonal story and mechanics, but there's a good chance some of those will hit the eternal realm after. But those are probably the biggest points I wanted to hit up front. If that answers all you wanted to know, then please feel free to head on out. Before you do though, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Each one of those things does truly help me out in a very, very huge way, and I can't, cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Lastly, please don't forget to follow me on Twitch, where I will be streaming Diablo 4, as well as Baldur's Gate 3, and plenty of other games. Well, let's get started here on my FAQ about your first season in Diablo 4. Before we get started, I know all this is really boring. It's just a bunch of text on a text document, but I felt like this is probably the easiest way to go about a lot of this information where I can just simply highlight what I'm talking about. I'm going to overlay some pictures here and there that might make sense to a certain pertinent questions um, and what have you. So you can be on the lookout for those as you're kind of sifting through this. I think a lot of it can kind of just be listened to passively. So if you want just go ahead and turn me on in the background. That sounds real weird to say. Ooh, that sounds awkward. <laughs> but you can just go ahead and do that if you wish or just jump ahead to whatever you want. Also too, if you'll notice here that I've got this little asterisk. So any question that has an asterisk next to it, it's some form of unconfirmed answer, but it'll be based off of previous Diablo 3 knowledge such or Diablo 2 knowledge as far as how their seasons operate and what have you. And if you have any questions that are not answered in this, please feel free to go ahead and answer them uh, or ask them in the comments below. And if you have a question as well that isn't answered, check to see if it's been already answered in the comments section below. That way we, we try to reduce or mitigate as much overlap of the same question as possible. Well, let's get started here on our first one. And it's easy. When does the season start? So the season will start on the 20th of July, 2023. That's the launch of the season, but the season patch will come out on the 18th of July. What should I do before the season starts? So you want to complete the campaign, discover the entire map and get all the Lilith statues. That's your big focus. But the most important thing you should do is log into your main character before you make a seasonal character, starting on the 18th and onward. This way your main character's progress will get bound to your account. You only need to do this once, and it's a weird kind of sort of jerry-rigged system set up by Blizzard, but if you can't do that until say maybe July 28th or August 15th or maybe even October 4th, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just need to log into your main before your seasonal whenever you decide to play the season. That's only for the very first time you do a season. This will work in perpetuity after that. You'll never have to do it again. It's just kind of a weird system that they created because they hadn't planned on doing a lot of this to begin with, which is really, really, really weird. Now, what are the seasons? Seasons are a three to four month long event within Diablo where everyone makes a new character in an exclusive seasonal realm with additional story content, a special seasonal journey that grants cosmetics, a battle pass for more cosmetics, as well as new uniques, legendaries slash legendary aspects, bosses, dungeon sets, and special season mechanics. 
Is there new content within the seasons? Yes, they will add season-specific mechanics and storyline. Any of the uniques, legendaries, bosses, and what have you will be available across the entire game. So what that means is the seasonal realm, which is with the season, and the eternal realm, which you are currently playing on. You are currently active on the eternal realm. If you're on a softcore player, or softcore, softcore character, or you're on the hardcore realm if you're a hardcore character. And here's one I just added. What are the different realms? You are currently playing on the Eternal Realm if you're playing a softcore character without permadeath. The hardcore characters play on the hardcore realm. All seasonal characters will reside on the seasonal realm for softcore characters or a seasonal hardcore realm if they're hardcore. Does my current character get deleted? No. No characters will be deleted ever. All of your current Eternal Realm characters remain the same. The seasonal characters become Eternal Ones after the season ends. Can I transfer my Eternal character to the Seasonal Realm? No, you must start from scratch with a brand new character. Can seasonal characters play with normal Eternal Realm players? No, they cannot. What transfers over to Seasons from the Eternal Realm? All of your current progress on the map that you've discovered, any transmogs you've unlocked via salvaging, any horses and horse cosmetics, and any of the Lilith statues you've unlocked will all transfer over to the seasonal realm from your eternal realm. Now here's where things get spicy. Why should I or do I have to play seasons? You do not need to play seasons if you don't want to. Seasons are a great way to experience new content being added to the game with each season on the same footing as everyone else. So if you're coming into the game for the first time, you can play at the same level as everyone else. Or if you go on a hiatus, you can jump into the next season and be on a level playing field. Seasons are about experiencing the game in a different way. Uh, trying new builds, playing characters you didn't before, reapproaching your most beloved class in a different light. There's a lot of ways to approach seasons. Don't think of it as the same grind because ARPGs are very much about the journey, not the destination. And Seasons and Ladders is something that Diablo 1 started back in like 1994. So this is kind of a hallmark of this genre. I guess the best way to compare it is like doing a um, a game like PUBG or a Battle Royale. That's the name of it, Battle Royale. Doing a Battle Royale and then expecting to jump into a Battle Royale every time with the same loadout or the weapons that you had before. That's not a hallmark of a Battle Royale, right? It's getting all those items. And a hallmark of ARPGs in the current era is doing these seasons and resetting from scratch and joining your bros that have maybe played this game for years and years and years on the same level so that you guys can all enjoy it together. So with that being said though, will I need to do the Renown grind again? Yes and no. Area Discovery and Lilith Statues will transfer over, which puts you at level 2 in every zone. You'll quickly be able to get to level 3 by simply getting all of the waypoints in each zone and doing all of the three strongholds for each zone. From there, doing dungeons in the zones as you level should get you very close to level 5. One thing to keep in mind here though, Level 5 Renown is equivalent to one level's worth of Paragon points. It's faster to get a level after level 50 than it is to grind level 5 Renown. So just be passive about it. No need to rush if you don't want to. If you do want to knock it out fast, just pick a zone. Do that zone's Renown one day, then do another one the next day. Breaking it up into 5 days helps break apart the monotony. Play how you want though, you know, not how external resources are trying to force you to play for some optimized gameplay method. If you hate the grind, then you won't want to do it and you'll burn yourself out. Yes, you want those Paragon points, sure, but if you're a casual player, then it's not going to matter either way if you hate your time playing to, do, to get all those Renown points. Just try and enjoy it, break the process up, and approach it in a better way because you're going to be pushing through the Renown grind a lot faster this time since you're starting at level one to work on it rather than starting at level 50 to work on it because you had to do the campaign and all this other jazz. So how long are the seasons? Seasons will run a minimum of 12 weeks, they've said, but have the option to be longer depending upon where they fall as far as their end or what holidays are around them and what have you. Do we need to buy the battle pass? No, the battle pass is strictly for more cosmetics. There are 27 free levels and 60 premium or paid levels. You will progress through the pass as well as the season journey at the same rate regardless of your battle pass paid status. So just to rephrase that, 
If I bought the battle pass and my friend did not, we will both progress through that pass at the same rate, earning the same amount of experience toward it and what have you, because that is how it is going to work. Uh, there's three levels that you get either in the beginning or at the end. So that's why that adds up to uh, a certain amount that's not even. So you'll get those at the end or, or beginning, depending upon how you complete the pass. But again, it is strictly for cosmetics. There's no player power attached to the battle pass. How much will the battle pass be? You'll buy the battle pass with the in-game currency platinum. 1,000 platinum for just the base pass and 2,800 platinum for the accelerated pass. The cost of that platinum is $9.99 and $24.99 respectively for whichever version of the pass you want to buy. So if you already have a reserve of platinum, you can use what you've got or buy what you need. What is the difference between the two battle pass options? The battle pass gives you access to all 60 of the paid premium cosmetic levels. The accelerated pass gives you access to the same cosmetic levels, but rather than starting at level one, you start at level 20. This is a handy option if you don't have a ton of time to grind out the season journey. Uh, if you've played Call of Duty, it's the same thing as a tier skip in Call of Duty. I personally almost always go with the accelerated pass because I just don't have the time. Um, if you don't want to spend the extra 15 bucks, then don't do it. If you don't want to spend the 10 bucks, don't do it. Because remember, there is the third battle pass option, which is just simply the free version. Will you earn platinum on the battle pass? Yes, the paid battle pass will net you 666 platinum coins, which is not enough for a pass, unfortunately, but you will earn currency nonetheless. Do I need to purchase the battle pass every season? Not if you don't want to, but you will not earn enough currency within a season to get one for free. You'll earn that 666 coins, which is 444 coins short of the 1000 platinum cost. So you're not required to buy the pass, but if you do want to keep doing the pass season after season, you will have to shore up either that 444 currency difference or just buy a whole brand new pass at 1000 platinum. What about if I bought the Digital Deluxe or Ultimate Edition, do I still need to buy the Battle Pass? Not for the first season, because it's included with the Digital Deluxe, but every season after that, you will have to. So for example, I bought the Ultimate Edition because I'm stupid, and I will now need to buy the Battle Pass after the season that is coming. So the second season, which is probably gonna land sometime in like November or October, I will have to buy that second Battle Pass. So we're gonna pivot here and now talk about the actual season itself. So to start us off, what is the season journey? The season journey is or are different stages or quests with specific objectives that progress the season and reward you with favor, a seasonal currency, aspects and other goodies. There are seven of these quests with varying objectives. You will need to complete a set amount of objectives within each quest to progress, not all of them. These objectives will be dungeons, cellars, craft potions, etc. Basic things that you'd just be doing already and that you will just kind of do as you're going through the game. It's a very kind of passive automatic system. If you've ever played, say, Diablo 3, you're going to be right at home with the Diablo 4 seasonal journey. Will the season journey have PvP objectives? Yes, but since you don't need to complete every objective in a quest, they're optional and just simply can be skipped. How do I complete the season? Do I need to grind all the way to level 100 again? You simply need to complete the seasonal journey. Level 100 will almost guaranteed not be an objective on the seasonal journey, nor will killing Uber Lilith. The journey will probably be complete around level 70 or so. I'd be surprised if they threw that on there because of the amount of time required to get to level 100 alone, as well as optimize your build to kill Uber Lilith. It's just too much of a time sink. And historically speaking, seasonals have not been something where you need to push the absolute end of the game. You just need to get to a pretty good point that's like the beginning of the end game or the mid game. So with that being said, how long will it take to complete the seasonal journey? It's hard to say without playing it, but the general rule of thumb for a Diablo 3 season was around like 10 days if you're playing something like two hours a day. It should be a quick process where the majority of the quests are knocked out via leveling, with the latter quests kind of being end game related, like, you know, X number of hell tides or a certain level of nightmare dungeons or world bosses, stuff that is end game related. Another big thing for the seasons are the season blessings. And what are they? Season blessings are a new system added where you use smoldering ashes, a free currency gained by doing the season that everyone gains at the same rate. 
These ashes contribute to different buffs for your character. There are four levels to each buff, and they are experience, gold earned from vendor sales, materials from salvaging, duration of elixirs, and season-specific mechanic buffs. Um, and these look like they can get up to 4x of whatever their base value is. So for example, it shows us that experience has a base value of 3%. After four levels, I would assume it can probably max out at around 12%. And are those season blessings account wide? They seem to be seasonally account wide and only unlock starting at reward tier eight and character level 40. Uh, we don't have a com confirmation of whether or not they are, but it wouldn't make much sense that they aren't. So then this all breaks down to is how long will it take me to level in the seasons? And this answer is going to be very subjective, right? It's going to be dependent upon your time invested into the game, but seasonal leveling leveling <laughs> will be much faster than your first playthrough. I'd really estimate that it should take 10 to 15 hours to get to level 50, depending on how casual you play. You'll be jacked with skill points and stat points from the Lilith statues and all of your renown. This will help you level extremely fast. Also, you now know what you're doing, so retracing those steps will be far easier. Lastly, with the new Smoldering Ashes and Season Blessing system, you can earn up to that 12% experience bonus that will provide you with a much faster leveling experience. Does my Codex of Power transfer to the season? Unfortunately, it does not, but with the entire map revealed, you can quickly find which dungeons you need to do to get any aspects you'll need for your build. Do I lose my achievements? No. Achievements are account wide and you'll be able to gain more achievements towards your overall progress. There will probably be new achievements within each season, but your current one should just kind of be the same. Will you need to complete the campaign again? No. If you've beaten the campaign, then you can create a character on the seasons that bypasses the campaign and gets access to all the usual post campaign activities you would get under level 50. Just like if you made a brand new character now. This includes amount, Tree of Whispers, Legion Event, World Bosses, and any seasonal mechanics like the new Malignant Growth System that's being added for Season 1. Will I share any currency such as gold, materials, obols, or blood shards with any non-seasonal characters? Nope. You'll have to completely start from scratch here. How long will it be in between each season? With the seasons lasting a minimum of 12 weeks, there should be a little less than two weeks in between the next one starting up. Uh, from Diablo 3's experience, we've seen that it's typically around like 10 to 15 days between each season. So this gives you a chance to kind of try some stuff out and what have you. All right, we've made it onto the final page. This is like a six page document or some shit, five page document. So this is the final, final page here. So what happens with my stash on and off season? So your stash, during the season is brand new and thus starts from scratch. After the season though, you will have a chance to transfer anything from your previous season stash to your existing Eternal Realm stash. You will only have one season to do this. So for example, if you have a character in season one and the season ends, you have all of season two to transfer your stash from season one to the Eternal Realm before it's deleted you cannot access that stash on the new seasonal character of season two. So basically that's like a special stash that you access on the eternal realm that you're pulling from on a one way trip, right? You're pulling it from the season one stash to the new eternal realm stash and you're done with it. Then it, then it gets deleted and it's gone forever after that. So should I focus on one character or multiple pre and or during the seasons. So just make sure you have the campaign completed, all of your Lilla statues unlocked out, or knocked out, locked out, and just do all your goddamn Lilla statues and have the entire map discovered. After that, when the season starts, it's really just entirely up to you. Since that progress will save to your entire count, you'll never have to worry about it again, considering that those are the only constant values between Eternal Realm and Seasons. Will we get more character slots? What do we do when we run out of slots? You will run out of slots. Oh God, that sounds like I said slots. You will run out of slots and you just delete any ones you don't want to play. As mentioned, I'll be keeping one of each class and cycling certain ones as needed. So with Paragon points and boards, it will be a bit tedious to just have maybe one character for every class, but hopefully they'll have a better way or answer for this in the future, like maybe respecking entire boards or something like that. We will get the Scroll of Amnesia at the end of the uh, the season as a, as you can you can find them, 
and it allows you to completely reset your character. So those will be nice things to have um, as they go into the Eternal Realm to completely reset them. But by and large, I'm pretty much only going to keep probably four or five uh, static characters as I cycle out and delete seasons as I as I uh, take part in them. I'm not going to do every single season. Who knows? Maybe I will. But still, you'll just delete the ones you don't want. What is the purpose of the Eternal Realm, if you've got the Seasonal Realm, right? So this is the place to house all of your characters that you've played since the start of the game or want to retain after a season. Personally, I'm going to have one of each class at a high level to play test builds and experiment with the stuff before going into a new season. I think I actually originally had this question before the previous one. That's why I said, you know, as previously stated, but that's neither here nor there. Do I need to play the season and will I miss out on anything if I don't? Now, I've kind of answered this in a lot of different ways, but I explicitly asked it like this to see if it would uh, help people out. But no, you do not need to play the season. You will miss out on any seasonal mechanics that end up being exclusive to, to the season, but there's a chance that they will transfer into the Eternal Realm afterwards. Uh, Blizzard has said, hey, we reserve the right to bring any seasonal mechanic that we particularly like into the Eternal Realm as a permanent addition to the game, but there's but there's nothing saying that we will always do this. So that's why I said that it will or might transfer, whatever it is. But outside of that, each season will have exclusive cosmetics that you won't get as well. And other than that, that's it. So it's pretty much cosmetic and mechanic related. Everything else will either activate on the Eternal Realm immediately or after the season concludes. An example here would be your uniques, legendaries, uh, bosses, new dungeon sets, anything like that. It's gonna activate on the Eternal Realm at the same time as the Seasonal Realm. So our last question here though is, what can I do with my Eternal character during the season? And everything. I think this is one of the things that people are going to really underestimate. Since uniques, legendaries, bosses, all that stuff drop on both the seasonal and the eternal realms simultaneously, like right when they get kicked off, then you can use your main characters to test out builds. Uh, say you want to make a seasonal minion necromancer and you've been running blood necromancer. Well, go farm out the legendary aspects you want to test and duplicate the build to see how you like it. Remember, we'll get the patch for those things two days prior to the actual launch of the season. So you can effectively do a dry run of the build if you want. The only thing you can't do is any of the new seasonal mechanics, such as the new malignant growth socketing system being added in with season one. Everything else though, you can keep playing your character just as normal. You can, like I said, even dry run and test out builds before you play them in the season. At that, it brings our video here to a close. So hopefully this helps you out. This gave you a good idea of what the hell the seasons are, maybe some of the big questions you have. And I know I missed a question you probably have. I tried to think of every little thing. I combed through a ton of my comment section to try and find some of the questions that I didn't even occur, or I looked through stuff on Reddit or on forums of just general questions people were having about the seasons. And like I've said, I probably missed a, con a ton of things. So feel free to just go ahead and ask me in the comment section below. If you see me in the game, ask me, join my Discord, ask on the Discord, whichever one you want. Join a stream, ask on the stream. We don't know all of what's coming in the future for seasons, right? We don't know if there's going to be characters added during the season. They've not specifically said. I think it's safe to say that characters or classes will probably be reserved mainly for DLCs with uh, the few classes here and there. But there are some general question marks that even I have, and I probably, and that's probably why I didn't even answer them in this. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Very excited for seasons to start in about two weeks here. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.